Welcome to Time to Pray. If you didn't already know it, I'm the Reverend Canon Anne Clark, Associate Priest in the Parish of Wanstead in East London. Every day at this time I invite you to join me for a short period of prayer taken from the Church of England's Time to Pray. There is a free app available where you can find the text of this service. Today is Friday, May the 8th, in the season of Easter. It is also the feast of St. Julian of Norwich, and it is um, VE Day. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. Yesterday I was crucified with Christ. Today I am glorified with him. Yesterday I was dead with Christ. Today I am sharing in his resurrection. Yesterday I was buried with him. Today I am waking with him from the sleep of death. The words of Gregory Nazianzus. Our psalm set for today, Friday, in Eastertide is Psalm 145, and it's one of the psalms of praise towards the, at the end of the Psalter. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name for ever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. His greatness is beyond all searching out. One generation shall praise your works to another and declare your mighty acts. They shall speak of the majesty of your glory and I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. They shall speak of the might of your marvellous acts and I will also tell of your greatness. They shall pour forth the story of your abundant kindness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. For the Lord is gracious and merciful, long-suffering and of great goodness. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. King of the universe, you show the bright glory of your reign in acts of mercy and enduring love. Raise the spirits of the downcast and restore those who have fallen away, that we may sing forever of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today, as I said, is the festival of Julian of Norwich. He's probably one of my favourite, all-time favourite saints and has influenced my life greatly. On this day in the year 1373, she was 33 years old and was suffering from what was considered to be a terminal illness. A woman of Norwich, whose own name is unrecorded, she experienced a series of 16 visions which revealed aspects of the love of God. Following her recovery, she spent the next 20 years of her life pondering their meaning and recorded her conclusions in what became the first book written by a woman in English, The Revelations of Divine Love. And that book is still in print today, and I certainly commend it to you. At an unknown point in her life, she became an anchoress attached to the Church of St. Julian of Norwich, and it was this name, Julian, by which she became known in later generations. She died around the year 1417. Well, as I said, Julian is an amazing woman of the Middle Ages. And she's a woman of our time as well, because Julian lived through the most turbulent times. She lived, um, <laughs> we're living through this pandemic of coronavirus, she lived through the Black Death. There were wars, right? There was 
trouble in the church. The popes had moved, popes had moved from Rome to Avignon, so there was trouble there. England and France were in what was going to be a hundred year war. There was the peasants' revolt. There was a suppression of, of the Lollards and so on. They were very, very turbulent times in which she lived. So she is very much, I feel, a woman for our day. And she's famous for her writings and many of them. And I'm going to read you an extract today from probably one of her most famous bits. And these are her words. And she's reflecting on God's creation. And in this, he showed me something small, no bigger than a hazelnut, lying in the palm of my hand, as it seemed to me. And it was as round as a ball, and I looked at it with the eye of my understanding and thought, what can this be? And I was amazed that it could last, for I thought that because of its littleness, it would suddenly have fallen to nothing. And as I un answered my understanding, I answered in my understanding, it lasts and always will because God loves it and thus everything has being through the love of God. In this little thing, I saw three properties. First, God made it. Second, God loves it. And third, God preserves it. But what did I see in it? It is that God is the creator and the protector and the lover. For until I am substantially united to him, I can never have perfect rest or true happiness until that is, I am so attached to him that there can be no created thing between my God and me. Absolutely beautiful. And I'm just going to take what she calls those three properties. It exists. This hazelnut exists. Everything exists because, first of all, God made it. Second, God loved it. And three, third, God preserves it. And so she sees that God is creator, protector and lover. Well, for any generation, these are beautiful words that we can take with us, knowing that each one of us, God has created. And God has created us through love. God loves us. And thirdly, God preserves us. Creator, protector, lover. Take those words with you this day. And through these difficult times, as she lived through difficult times, we can take courage because one of her other most famous sayings, all shall be well, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. So let us believe that in this pandemic and as we commemorate VE Day today, let us remember that all shall be well, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Amen. And very appropriate on this day, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. And so let us pray. And on this commemoration of VE Day, let us pray for peace. Let us pray for peace for all those parts of the world where war and conflict still rage. Let us pray for the peacemakers, for diplomats, for arbitrators, for all who work 
to bring people together. Because when countries and peoples war, it is failure. And so we pray for an end to violence and bloodshed. And as we pray for peace and an end to war, let us pray for an end to the causes of war. For all those things that bring about warring factions. For poverty and greed and hardship. Wherever God's people suffer, let us bring peace. Lord of justice and of peace, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have been harmed in any way, in body, mind or spirit, as a result of war. For those who have suffered the traumas and continue to do so. For those who have lost their homes, their livelihoods, members of their families and friends. For all those who have lost their country, their status. For all forced to be refugees as a result of war. God of comfort, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let us give thanks for all those who show us the way of peace, for those who show us that God is love, we give thanks for Julian of Norwich. And we pray that we may remember that God creates us, loves us and preserves us. We continue to pray for those who are sick. And we pray that we may be aware of the safety of others as perhaps restrictions are lifted. Let us remember our duty to other people. A prayer by Barbara Glasson, who is president of the Methodist Conference. We are not a people of fear, we are a people of courage. We are not a people who protect our own safety, we are a people who protect our neighbour's safety. We are not a people of greed, we are a people of generosity. We are your people, God, giving and loving whatever we are, whatever the cost, and for as long as it takes, wherever you call us. Amen. And a prayer for VE Day. Lord God our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit, give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope and keep us faithful now and always. Amen. And in a moment of silence, I invite you to bring your own prayers and petitions for this day before Almighty God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And a prayer for this day, the Feast of Julian of Norwich. 
Most holy God, the ground of our beseeching, who through your servant Julian revealed the wonders of your love, grant that as we are created in your nature and restored by your grace, our wills may be so made one with yours that we may come to see you face to face and gaze on you for ever. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray together as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the risen Christ give us his peace. Alleluia. Amen. As always, thank you for joining me for this time of prayer. I hope you enjoyed Julian of Norwich and I encourage you uh, to get her writings and read them. Um, she has a lot to tell us. We have a lot to learn from her. Uh, it's a beautiful sunny day. But let's keep safe. Don't let's be tempted to think it's all over because it's not. And we have a duty to other people and to each other to keep safe. If you're um, perhaps not joining me tomorrow or for any reason. Um, just to remind you that on Sunday we're streaming live at 10 o'clock our Eucharist, which you can uh, pick up the details of in our email or on this Facebook page or on Twitter. Um, so please join us for that on Sunday. Um, and also um, to remind you um, that... I forgot what I was going to say, um, to be there for that, um, that time of prayer uh, on Sunday morning in the Eucharist. And I wish you uh, every blessing for today.